It's tournament and tea break time. I'm Ross Satter. And my name is René Denfeld. And boy, oh boy, did we have a, a day today on Super Saturday. Uh, the first thing to note was that it didn't rain. It didn't rain. It held up, which was super necessary because we obviously had some matches from yesterday carrying over into today. Um, and particularly on Chatrier, things went on very went by very quickly. Whereas on Suzanne Longland, <laughs> things took a long, long time today. So um, yeah, I think most of the results were the ones that mm. we expected. But I think two results were much clearer than many would have thought. And I think that's the win of Maria Sharapova against. Um, Karolina Pliskova and the win of Serena Williams over Julia Gerges. And those two have thus progressed into the fourth round and will set up a blockbuster on Monday. Yeah, I mean, so Sharapova wasn't joking when she said that whenever the two of them get together, there is a lot of attention. Uh, of course, Sharapova didn't have the benefit of knowing who she was going to face. The likelihood was always going to be that it was Serena, but she had to sort of hedge her bets a little bit. However, when Serena came into the press, she wasn't pulling any punches at all. Um, I only just had a quick look at the transcript because Anjali Kerber was coming into press at the same time. So I was running around a little bit in, in a bit of a, yeah, slightly frantically, <laughs> I suppose, because I came into main, main uh, interview room number one as the announcement went through, Anjali Kerber's coming into interview room too. So I was like running out of Serena's press into Kerber's press because I obviously covered the tournament. So yeah, a bit hectic and I will rewatch Serena's presser, but Serena was um, quite forthcoming in terms of the questions that she got asked. I'm sure you read all about it. I am ready to watch sports particularly <laughs> tomorrow and on many other sides. So um, there will be enough talking points to keep people going and to turn to turn Twitter into uh, into a burning <laughs> into a burning uh, uh, yeah it's it's going to be like a minefield for the next forty eight hours. But I mean, expected. the one thing that that is true, and the one thing I think that both of them said that 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 you can't refute is that they're both on a comeback journey um, with very different tra trajectories. When Maria came back in Stuttgart, I think we'll all agree that it looked like a complete cakewalk draw. And it was, and she she had, the, she, she was blessed. She got to the semi-finals, um, but obviously the um, playing back-to-back -back matches when you haven't been playing back-to-back -back matches took its toll. Injuries have been coming back and forth for her. It's only really Madrid and Rome that she actually, to me, with the exception of maybe Tianjin, uh, had actually shown any real consistent form. Um, what, what say you? I, I think her match against Pliskova today was one of the best matches yeah. that she's played in a long, long time. That includes the matches in Rome, where I thought she looked pretty good. Um, yes, of course, completely different. Like the, I, I find it quite funny that, oh, they're both on comeback trails. I find it very tough to compare yeah. the two of them in any shape, way, or form. Um, not something that can't be compared, really. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm. I will be honest. I was very cautious when it came to Serena's um, matches here, or the, her, her, mm -hmm. how she was going to do. And today, I thought was very aggressive. Uh, Gerges didn't play as well as I think she could have or would have needed to play. But she also said that she felt like she got smothered by Williams in the um, in many occasions. So yeah, we've got we've got a, we've got a big one set up for Monday. But it's not the only big one on the women's side. Um, Simona Halep coming through against in a, in a tough one against Andrea Petkovic, who tweaked her knee in the second early in the second set. So it was a tale of two two matches almost. Um, Petkovic not severely injured; it's something she had before, which is due to her many knee, knee issues and knee surgery. So she'll be fine. But Halep comes through, faces Mertens, who looked super impressive today against Gavrilova. So one to circle in. And I think that's, for me, that's like one of the upsets of the, to me that is the upset of the day, is Kerber um, beating Kiki Burton's 7-6-4 uh, and 7-6-4 and, and two tiebreakers. I did not see this coming. I'm German and I, <laughs> this, so look, I don't, I don't, I generally don't look, don't look at things through a German, through German glasses or whatever. So I was pretty um pretty sold on Burton's going through here and I in in fairness I mean I watched I watched a little bit of the match and in fairness I think that Kerber was probably the same ilk I've it's been a long time since I've seen that kind of reaction from her for for getting a win 
Uh, she sort of went full on Leighton Hewitt double lawnmower starting mode and then literally just flopped in the chair you know I've, I haven't seen that kind of fire in her for a long time it was breathe it, it was a sigh of relief afterwards and I was like oh, were you relieved or were you just happy like what was it she was like that was a relief and I was like which yeah. I found interesting because basically I feel like she went into this match feeling like the complete underdog so for her to have won it and then feel relieved I feel it's uh, like it says a lot about what's going on upstairs in terms of psychology with her, which is cl always quite interesting because she doesn't let on to too much. Um, but there's like a lot of it's Back and quite forth. yeah, it's quite. I think it's she 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 makes things sound quite simple in a way, but I think what's going on within her head is quite complex and quite complicated. So. Um, uh, yeah, big win for her, um, for Burton's. I, I was surprised. I felt Burton's wasn't sharp today. There were a lot of like sprayed balls, and especially when she was serving for the for the second set, and then she got broken. And afterwards, um, yeah, Kerber came out like with 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 a knife between her teeth in the in the second set tiebreaker, and um, yeah, came back from one three down, I think. And yeah, big match yeah, against yeah. Garcia. And Garcia was like for Garcia, either matchup was gonna always gonna be tricky. She doesn't really like playing Kerber because. Kerber draws arrows out of her, and she doesn't have the best memories of playing Kiki Burton's, obviously, from Madrid, where she got um, almost taken to the woodshed. So, um, tough tough ask for Garcia. It will be on Chatrier um, against Kerber, I think. So, Or maybe they're going to put it on Longland. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, tricky one. And someone who's been very, very convincing is Gabi Nimogorosa. I know. Right? I know, right? Yeah. So... On a mission. Well, let's let's leave the women for now, um, mm -hmm. and because I think that we're going to have plenty of material to talk about tomorrow in the in the lead up to Maria and Serena. And before people roll their eyes and be like, "Oh my God, it's not a rivalry, it's none of this," what it is is an important match between two iconic women of the sport, and that's that's the end of it. So you're just going to have to listen to it anyway, regardless. Anyway, on to the men. Sadly, Kyle Edmund, who was our last Brit in the singles standing. Uh, fell to the streaky but ultimately probably more experienced Fabio Fonini. That match, it felt like it went on till the, you know it had been going on since the beginning of time. Forever. I, <laughs> like, I, this is, I know this sound. I sound exasperated, and I actually mean it because basically <laughs> I was waiting for. I I had to wait. Not we we all look at draws and a little bit like where are the players that we're mainly covering? Where are, where are they? And. Gerges Burton's was uh, Gerges Williams was up fourth on that court after the completion of um, Goffer um, Goffer so that went on forever as well. So the first two men's matches on Long Lone went on for a long time. But oh, that that was. I mean, I, th I think what told was that Fanini has the experience of coming through these things. I mean, yes. so has Edmund. Let's be fair. He has. He did have a great run in Australia where he pulled off two outstanding five set wins. Uh, it was just impossible to call this match. Yes. It's the the momentum. It didn't even really switch. It kind of, the momentum kind of just flopped around in the middle somewhere, and they kind of danced around it like girls dancing around a handbag. Um, but in the end of the, at the end of the day, it you know Kyle couldn't convert on the two only two chances that um, that he had in the in that fifth set. They were the first breakpoint chances that came up in that fifth set, and. Fonini just needed the one. To, and it's just to always it. it's always the weird thing, obviously, with Fabio Fonini is when he wants it and when he cares, he's he's a tricky one to deal with. And um, mm. he steps, he stays at the baseline, and he goes for his shots. And if he if he's really invested and he really wants it, and he doesn't go on one of his many mental walkabouts, <laughs> he's super dangerous. And I'm curious to see how he's going to to um, perform against the Marin Cilic, who has been quietly. Um, uh, dis uh, who quietly disposed of, of of Steve Johnson today in three sets? So um, yeah. we'll see. It's it's at the end. I think this entire the top half is still about like who can stop Rafa, but that doesn't that doesn't stop the other matches from being um, intriguing. For example, Kevin Anderson at what feels like seven feet against Diego <laughs> Schmartzman, who is like five. My and height. Half. <laughs> so to me, that's just in intriguing, just in terms of like. It's a real like biblical David and Goliath. Yes. I mean, I half expect Diego Schwartzman to come out with a little pouch and a stone and just fell, um, fell Kevin Anderson with one swoop, um, and then I can't honestly remember what happens in the rest of that Bible story because I probably was about as old as God when it, when when I heard it. But anyway, um, that's that's the men's draw. What have we got to look forward to tomorrow? 
Well, tomorrow we've got, um, if you want to see whether Alexander Zverev can make the, his first uh, ever quarterfinal at a Grand Slam, then you will have to be up early, especially if you're in the, in the US or um, in the UK. It's going to be 10 a.m. in the morning. For us here, it's 11. Um, first match on Langlan. And then you've got, it's, it feels almost like the softer, the softer day feels like Monday is going to be much heavier okay. and tomorrow is going to be a little bit softer because the bottom half of the women's draw, as I call it, the, the draw of opportunity. <laughs> Big opportunity for Kiz or Buzanescu to make a quarterfinal here. Um, Kontaveit and Stevens mm. both were delayed. They finished their matches today with uh, Kontaveit taking out Kvitova in two, in, in two, um, uh, uh, was it two tiebreak sets? I believe it was. Oh, uh, hang on. Uh, yeah, I believe it was also two type in, in, in a way that was a tough one yes, to call. Yes, it was yeah. six and four. Six and four. So um, and we all know how dangerous Contavite can be, and it wouldn't be shocking if she made quarters here. Yeah, although she, I mean, she already made a meal of closing closing that out. But yeah, I mean, like you say, it's a draw of opportunity. It's been blown apart in that in that half, and maybe tomorrow we can just catch our breath a little bit before the drama of Monday comes around. I will. I've already thought about just not opening Twitter for thirty six hours because it's going to be a little exhausting, I suppose. Um, and yeah, question is, I think this, the, the the matchup that many want to see is is Team Zverev in the quarterfinals, but uh, Dominic Team down to down love to in the head to head to Kane Shikori. So that's I think that's that should be a very good one. And who knows what Fernando Verasco can conjure up out of his. Yep. hat against Novak Djokovic in the evening. Okay, so you, we will be back tomorrow. We will be getting our heads together and having a really good think about what, what we want to see out of Maria and Serena. Yeah, I think <laughs> I, I, I'll think i try and think about it as little as possible, basically, until, until tomorrow in the what? evening, because I think a lot of other people will be doing a lot of thinking about that in the next few hours and days, so... I'll just take a back seat. In the meantime, we're going to bask in the glory of what has been a lovely day in Paris. Um, uh, we'll ignore the weather forecast from Monday to Friday next week. Oh, is it really that bad? Let's just ignore it. I think it's just better for everyone. <laughs> okay. All right, then. So I'll be back to wearing my raincoat for the rest of the week. You have, of course, been listening to Ross Satoff from Britwatch Sports. And Renee Denfeld of My Tennis. Thank you for listening. Au revoir.